Hi, and welcome to this lecture on random numbers, or specifically pseudo-random numbers, but we'll get there a little bit later. I want to explain how your computer deals with the randomness, especially in the context of simulation modeling. It turns out that it is all about generating numbers between 0 and 1 that are uniformly distributed. Let me explain. Let's have a look at these three distributions. We have a uniform distribution with a minimum value of 5 and a maximum value of 15, which means it has an expected value of 10. The normal distribution has a mean value of 10 and a standard deviation of 2, which also means it has an expected value of 10. And then the exponential distribution has a lambda parameter of 1 divided by 10. And knowing the exponential distribution, 1 over lambda is also the mean. So for the exponential distribution, the mean time between arrivals is also 10. So if we were to use expected value, these three distributions should give us the same thing. But when we deal with uncertainty, it's a little bit trickier. And when we're in simulation, how does the computer know how to sample correctly out of these different distributions? Now, <clears throat> maybe you need to refresh your statistics a little bit, but let's have a look at Wikipedia at these three distributions. And what is quite nice is they show you the probability density function and the cumulative distribution function. So we know that the probability under a curve always adds up to 1, and the cumulative distribution function starts at zero, and as you move from minus infinity towards positive infinity, it, it adds up towards uh, one, which is the sum of the probability under the graph. So it's just a cumulative distribution function. And Wikipedia will also give you all of the expressions in terms of how these values can be calculated. So if we look at the uniform distribution, if we can generate a number between 0 and 1 that is uniformly distributed, and we look at the expression for the cumulative distribution function, we have the cumulative distribution function value, which is the value between 0 and 1. We have A, we have B, which is the minimum and maximum of our distribution, which means we can calculate X. Similar for the normal distribution, if we have the cumulative distribution function, we have the mean, we have the standard deviation, we can calculate x. So looking at this graph again, every time that we just generate a value between 0 and 1, we can kind of reverse engineer um, that cumulative distribution function value back to an x value, which is then representative of the distribution that we're in. But it turns out that your computer does not truly generate random numbers. It is actually deterministic. It follows a recipe. Now, in order to illustrate this, let me do this in R just to show you in terms of this recipe. And I'm just going to fabricate my own little recipe to illustrate the point. So in R, I created a demo random script file. And I'm just going to clear my workspace to start off with. And the nice thing in R, you can write your own functions. And I'm going to call mine generate numbers using my recipe. And that will be a function. And this is typically the format. Now, you can provide your function with arguments. I'm going to give mine 2n, which is going to be compulsory. So I'm not giving it a default value. And that will be the number of values that my function will generate. And I'm going to provide it with a starting position which I am going to give a default value called NA. And at the start of my function, I'm going to check if starting is indeed NA, then I need to do something. I need to start with some useful value. And I'm going to use my current machine's time. Right, so what does system.time give us? 
gives us the current date and time in a human readable format. And if I call as numeric on that, I get, I believe, the seconds since the 1st of January 1970, which is a Unix timestamp. So I'm going to initialize my results called values as a numeric vector of length n and start with my starting value as the first current value. And then for i in 1 to n, so I'm going to repeat this n times, I'm going to say that my new value, and let's come up with a recipe here. Let's say we make this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, multiplied by whatever the current value is, and we take the modulus with 2 to the power 5 minus 1. And if we want values between 0 and 1, let's divide this by 2 to the power 5 minus 1. Now that we've generated a new value based on our current value, let's put this into the ith position of our results and update the current value to be the new value. And when we're done with generating n numbers, we return the values. So if I execute all of, the, all of this, I will get a function in my workspace called generate numbers using my recipe. So what does this function of ours actually do? Let's call it generate numbers using my recipe and we provide n equals 10. So when we execute this, we see that we do indeed get values that seem fairly random and they vary between zero and one. If we call our function again, we get different values. And that is because we don't provide a starting position and that means it takes the current system time, which varies every time that you call the function, and generate new values. And this is the same as when you call, for example, the random normal function, and you say, I want 10 values, normally distributed with mean 10 and standard deviation 2. It will generate those numbers, and every time that you actually call it, you will get different values sampled from that distribution. But what happens if we give it a starting position? Let's say our starting position is 2020-08-11, today's date. If I execute this function with that starting position, I get values that seem random, but when I generate it again, I get exactly the same results. And this is the same as when you call a command set seed. And let's use the date again. If we set the seed, which is the starting position for the random number generator, and we generate the values, and we reset the seed, the first time that we call our function, it will give us exactly the same results. And this is useful when doing the verification of your, of your simulation model, or when you want, want a random process to be repeatable and reproducible. So your computer actually follows a recipe and therefore it's not truly random, it is actually what we refer to as pseudo-random. So you can make the computer repeat these random numbers precisely and exactly over and over again. Why is this important in simulation? Because while you're in the process of verification, of debugging your computer, you will often find that when you run a simulation model, it runs, it runs, if you run it again, it runs, and then suddenly it crashes because of some odd combination of different random values that was drawn that, that made your logic not work out precisely. Now, the next time that you run it, you say, but it, it, it was crashing just now. How do, I, how do I figure this out? And for, those, for that purpose, it is important to be able to set the seed so that you can have precisely repeatable and reproducible results. That's the one area where it might be useful to actually be able to, to set the seed and have repeatable results. The other point is that 
when you have done your verification and your model is correct and you've done your validation part as well, you are now ready to run your experiments. And because this is a random process, you want to actually have multiple runs and rather make your decisions over multiple runs that are different but controllable. And this is where this random seed plays a role again. There is a possibility that you can actually find patterns and it creates odd artifacts in your, in your results. So when you do get to the point of running your experiments, what we often do is we use, for the first run, we would use the date, for example, 2020, 08, 08, to represent the day that you're running your experiments, multiplied by one for the first run. And then 2020, 08, 08, multiplied by two for the second run. And that gives you seed values that are significantly different from one another, but are still 100% controllable. So you don't manipulate the seed to get the results you want. You still run multiple experiments, but now it's a little bit more controllable. It's repeatable. And if you give it to somebody else, it is reproducible and they should get to exactly the same conclusions at what, as what you've done.